When I picked up my mail last week, there was a package waiting for me from Jorge Wiles, or Willis, from Great Britain. This is his card, and he's an illustrator, and he drew this awesome picture of Jason and sent me this print. This deserves a frame. In this video, I thought it would be useful to show you the most basic picture frames that I like to make using just the table saw. You won't need a router, although if you have a miter saw, you could use that to make the miter cuts instead of the table saw. One of the big biggest sources of frustration people experience when making picture frames is sizing all four of the sides down to the size of the artwork. And if I were to try to frame this right down to that edge without having to you know, lose too much of the image, I would have to make the, all of those cuts very precisely. The secret to making this easier is to size your artwork up to your frame. In other words, you're not really going to size the artwork, but you can use a mat board to cut out a mat. That way you can cut this down to fit the size of frame you make and it takes a lot of pressure off of trying to get those exact measurements. You're gonna need a mat board for this project, obviously a table saw and a piece of acrylic or plexiglass. Oh, the other thing I highly, highly recommend you get is one of these strap clamps. When you're making picture frames, I don't think there's anything that works better than one of these. Basically, that's all you're gonna need to get started. I cut out this piece just as kind of a tester to see what this might look like and just to size it up a little bit. In general, when you cut your mats, you want the sides to be a little bit narrower than the top and the bottom. And sometimes it also helps to make the bottom part a little bit wider than the top just to give it some weight or you can completely center it. But what I think I'm gonna do is go two inches to the side and then I'll just measure up two inches top and bottom too. I want the frames themselves to be two inches wide. So I cut these strips down like this and I can lay them out this way. So when you're cutting these down to kind of a rough length, what you want to do is obviously, you know, add the extra two inches from your mat board or thereabouts. And that'll give you room for the miter cuts because remember, there's going to be a big difference between the outside of the miter and the inside. You're going to need a miter gauge that will let you set up a stop block so you can make exact repeated cuts. If you don't have a fancy one like this, you can use the one that came with your table saw. And what you need to do then is just attach a scrap board to the face of the miter gauge. There's gonna be a couple of holes, or in my case, these slots, that'll let you just screw that board in place. I like to set up my fence as close to the blade as possible, and just make sure that the fence is long enough that you have room to attach a stop block, just another piece of wood using a clamp. The key to success here is that you want to set up your 45 degree miter cut and not change it. So you don't want to have to make one cut going this way and then switch your miter gauge to go the opposite direction. So the way to do this is to set your miter gauge instead of this direction, set it this direction going up. And I'll show you why that's important here in just a second. But for now, I'm just going to lock this into place place and make sure I'm close to the blade. The first thing I want to do is just cut a miter at the end of each of these boards. I don't need to use the stop block for these first cuts. Make sure you grip the board tight when making these cuts so it doesn't slip. I'll start by cutting the shorter boards to their length. Since I know that the mat on that direction is gonna be 14 inches, I need to add an extra two inches for the side pieces. So I wanna cut these at 18 inches, and that's measured from the wide part of the miter. So I'll just measure up here and make a mark at 18. Again, I'm not really looking for exact measurements using this method. That looks pretty good. Now here's the reason why I want this miter gauge going in this direction and not, let me flip it around just for 
demonstration. Once you get it set, you don't want to be flipping it around like this. So let's say I had it going in this direction. And the problem is that I want the point, the longest side, to set up against the fence so that it can rest neatly up against the stop block. If I wanted to use the miter gauge going in this direction, I'd have to flip the board over this way, and then my stop block would have to be a wide one. It would have to sit up well further than this. It would need to be wider than the board so that I would have a nice firm stop. With just a regular stop block, it's gonna be hard to set that up because it's not really resting firmly on something, just that one point. So with it set up this way, I can have the point against the fence and set up the stop block, and it'll be easy to line it up with the cut because I've made that mark there, so I can line it up right like that, and then slide my stop block over and lock it into place. And again, if you're just using an accessory fence, just clamp a stop block on at that point. I can measure the length of the longer boards. So the mat board is gonna be 18 inches long, and these boards are two inches wide, so I wanna add four inches. So I'll take it up here to 22. It really helps to draw that 45 degree line using a combination square or whatever you have. Then I can line it up with the blade. And that's all you're gonna need the miter gauge for. Next, I wanna cut some rabbits on the back of the frames to hold the artwork in place. These need to be deep enough to hold the artwork, the mat board, and then a backer board. I usually like to go about half the thickness of the wood. Before you cut these rabbits, determine which sides you want to be the face of the frame and which side you want to be the back. I noticed one of these boards had a little rough spot on it, so I wanna make sure that's on the back side. I'm gonna mark the back sides where I want to make these rabbits. Typically these rabbits are about a quarter inch or around six millimeters wide or a little bit more. If you have really big heavy artwork you might want to make these a little bit bigger. So what I've done is just made a mark here and I'm just going to line my blade up with that. If you have a stack of dado blades, you could make these rabbits in just one pass. I don't really want to bother with setting those up, so I'm just going to make multiple passes moving my fence back after I've cut each board. could stop there but I thought I would add a couple little decorative touches to this by chamfering a couple of these edges. I'm gonna bevel my blade to I don't know maybe 30 degree angle or so and just shave a teeny bit off of that outside of that rabbit. If you don't add any other decorative touches, I do recommend that you make that bevel on that outside of that rabbit. I think that looks a lot nicer when the artwork is in there. But I like the look of that, and I think I'm just gonna repeat that on the outside of the frame. I think that makes a nice, simple, but elegant profile. Of course, you could get as fancy as you want with profiles if you have a router table, or you could even get fancier on your table saw if you wanted. One thing I've done in the past is just raise my table saw blade up a little bit and just make a series of grooves. That can look nice, especially if you kind of sand them down a little bit, give it some texture, lots of different options. So at this point, I can just kind of line this up and just see if that's gonna look about right. I like the look of it, and I like all the extra breathing room around the artwork. I'm gonna have a black mat in there, which should look really nice. You probably, though, wanna test this before you cut all of those profiles, just because at that point you've already switched around your setup. I probably should have mentioned that beforehand. 
but I didn't. So like after you've made all your miter cuts, that's when you wanna test the look of it. And then it's easy to just shave them down if you need to. Now I can glue this up and I'm just using regular yellow wood glue. There's always a, a little bit of discussion about how strong miter joints are on a picture frame. I think that they're usually strong enough to just glue together with no reinforcement because it's, it's not exactly end grain because it's at that 45 degree cut. So it makes for a pretty strong fit. And my kind of my thought is that a picture hanging on the wall isn't really going to be subjected to a lot of stress unless it falls off the wall, I guess. But just hanging there, it doesn't really need a lot of strength. But I'm going to show you how one way to reinforce these after I get this glued up. I always like to glue these with the front of the frame facing me so that I can get a good look at the miters and make sure that they're flush. So I'll get this about like that and then use the strap clamp. And I'm telling you, if you don't have one of these and you're going to be making picture frames, get one. So the key to using this is to get it to where it's sort of tight and then you can line up the corners just by sliding them around, you know, back and forth a little bit if you need to. But basically this is applying pressure in all four corners equally. One thing I should have mentioned, if you're going to make profiles on the outside of the frame, it's usually best to do that after you've assembled the frame. In fact, even this bevel, it would have been a little bit better to cut that after I've assembled this just because there's more room for these clamps to grab hold of. Okay, I'll let that dry about an hour and we'll get some lunch. Just a light sanding with 120 grit sandpaper is usually enough. If you need to sand down these chamfers, these bevels, use a sanding block or a sanding stick like this rather than the random orbit sander. The random orbit sander will likely just round over those nice crisp edges. And like I said, that's plenty strong enough to hang on the wall, but let me show you one method for reinforcing these corners that's kind of neat. You'll need a dowel. I'm using a one inch diameter dowel and a one inch diameter Forstner bit. These are gonna be on the back side of the frame so they don't show. And what I wanna do is on each corner on the miter, I'm just gonna drill a hole about halfway through. I'll just cut some short plugs out of this dowel using my table saw. I've installed a zero clearance insert plate because they would probably just fall into this plate. You could do this on a miter saw or even a hand saw would work well for these. You wanna make sure that those dowels fit well, that they're not too tight. If you have to really start pounding them in, those miters could come apart. Once those are in place, I can saw these flush. I'm using this Japanese flush trim saw. If you don't have one of these, you can use a hacksaw blade too. I find it helps to clamp the workpiece down. Cutting the acrylic plastic or the plexiglass is easy. Just use your table saw. You don't even need any kind of special blade. If your rip fence is anything like mine, there's a little gap under there. And a lot of times that plexiglass can slide underneath there. So it's a good idea to just clamp a board onto that to make sure I've got like, you know, zero clearance there. Check to make sure that fits. And now I can use that plexiglass as a cutting template for the mats. 
What I want to do is cut out two pieces of this. One so that I'll be able to cut out the opening in the mat, and then the other one is just going to be the backer board. And I'm just cutting this with a razor blade. Now it's just a matter of measuring the actual artwork. I'm going to make the window so that it comes in a little bit into that white border and then you know, transfer those measurements to the back side of my mounting board. You know, you could also cut these using an X-Acto knife or like a utility knife, but I've been doing it this way for years. Ever since I worked in a photo lab and I used to have to well, literally cut and paste ruby lifts and different types of film. The trick really is to make sure that the corners are tight, that they don't, you know, overlap. The main tip I have is don't try to cut through the entire piece of cardboard in one pass. Just make a bunch of lighter passes, cutting through a little bit at a time. So what's going to happen when you get all four of those sides cut is it's probably not going to drop out. It's probably going to be attached by those corners. And what you got to do is resist the temptation to try to pull this out because it's just going to rip that cardboard. So just stick your razor in there gently and try to finish off those corners and release them. Ah, right there. See that? It got caught right there. Make sure I get that. There we go. Okay, there's my mat board. There's several different ways you can mount the artwork to the back of that mat board and probably the best way is to get some archival mounting tape. And that way there's no acid in it that will, you know, affect the paper that the art is on. But I don't have any of that, so I'm just going to use some masking tape. By the way, this wood is cherry, so it's going to darken up really nice in the coming years. I'm going to finish it with some spray lacquer. Oh, every time I use this handle, people ask me about this. And yes, this is about one of the best things you could buy for using spray paint or spray lacquer or anything like that. Um, they're cheap, a couple bucks there. You can pick them up at a hardware store, home center, or I'll include a link down in the description where you can get it at Amazon. The biggest drawback to using acrylic is that when you peel that off, there's just so much static electricity on this that it just attracts any little bit of sawdust that there is. I almost forgot, I want to include this note from Jorge inside of here. There's a couple of different ways you can attach all of this stuff inside of here and one way would be to just use some small brad nails and you would just press this all down and then you can just drive them in halfway like that and put a few of them all the way around and that'll hold it in place. I used that method for years and years until somebody sent me this. This is a point driver that is made just for this purpose. It's sort of like what you would put inside of a brad nailer, except it's these individual points. And the way this works is you just line it up like this and poke it in. There's different kinds of hangers you can use on the back. I'm just gonna use these swivel kind because it's, it's what I had available. This is picture hanger wire and there's an actual specific method for doing this, but I'm not really sure what that is. You could, you, you could look it up on YouTube if you really are interested, but all I do is just kind of 
tie it through here. Like this. Tie a knot there and then trim off this excess. There's really no nothing fancy about the way I do this. One other thing I like to do is stick these little bumpers on the bottom of the frame down here so that it's not leaning so far away from the wall. And it protects the wall and the frame. If you wanted to get really fancy, you could cut out some craft paper and glue it to the back of this to keep it sealed from dust. And once you get that glued on there, you can actually wipe it down with a damp sponge and that'll kind of tighten it up on the back. But I'm not gonna bother with that. So here's what it looks like. Well, my ever-changing walls here, this looks like a good spot for now. Over here by my cat people picture. That cat people poster is autographed by Malcolm McDowell, by the way. Oh yeah. Hey, I hope this video inspired you to make your own picture frames. They're really a lot of fun to make, and over the years, it's probably the single project I've made more than anything else. If there's one bit of advice I'd like to give you about making picture frames, it's to exercise restraint as much as possible, unless it's a themed frame, kind of like my other Jason frame over there. In most cases, you really want the artwork to be the star of the show here, not the frame. The frame is meant to enhance the artwork. I think a clean, simple, profile like this almost always looks the best. But I know, we're woodworkers. We love to try to overcomplicate things. Hey, I wanna thank Jorge once again for sending me this amazing artwork. I just love it. Hey, I've got a lot of catching up to do in my next video with some ongoing projects that you probably already know about. So I'll see you then.